So, let us again summarize our progress from last episode. We built and launched our second sounding rocket that was more than capable of getting us past the Karman line and all the way into space proper. In the VAB queue we're currently constructing the rocket that will not only get us to space again, but also return some data safely to the ground. Finally, toward the end of the episode, we took to the skies in our dazzling pink flyer to gather a bunch of extra science from some remote biomes. This episode will of course pick up right where we left off before we finally finish up the sounding rocket portion of this playthrough. And again, before we get to the episode proper, I want to take the time to address comments that I've been getting during the series. I always encourage comments and feedback, and I try to respond as soon as I can, provided that I actually have any useful feedback to give. Which brings me to the topic of Kerbalism. I don't have a lot of experience playing with Kerbalism, and in fact no experience whatsoever within the context of Realism Overhaul. So without going into too much detail and making a fool out of myself, I'll just say that playing RP1 with Kerbalism installed is sufficiently different to base RP1 that you're going to have to look at a slightly different set of launches to go through the early game than the build order we're going for in this series. Just as the normal difficulty setting that we're using here is recommended for newer players, I'd also recommend against playing with Kerbalism if you're new to or returning from a longer hiatus from RP1. In any case, if you have any questions about playthroughs using Kerbalism, I'd recommend you direct your questions to the support channels on the RO Discord instead. On the topic of support, I've been asked to provide a .ccam file for this install on top of the installation instructions I detailed in episode 0. I've been hesitating on whether this is a good idea or not. Installing RP1 in its current state is not the simple process it ought to be, admittedly, and downloading the mods listed in a ccam file will not get you a working install. Further, you'll have to get all the requisite 1.6.1 updates for several mods in GitHub, as I demonstrated back in the preamble to this series. Still, if it helps someone get over that initial hurdle, I may as well provide it, with the above disclaimer that additional manual steps must be taken other than installing the mods listed from CCAM. Beyond providing this file, I'm not going to provide much additional support in installing RP1 using this method, if only because I've never tried going about it this way myself. I still recommend going by the step-by-step -step guide linked earlier in the and in the video description below of every episode of the series, because that's the way I used to do it. Once a release version of RP1 is out for 1.6.1, I will update this information, as by that point the installation procedure should be a lot simpler. But of course we were more than curious about where we left things off, which was with this flight. Now, I talked about last time how we should probably illustrate the flight path that we're going for and the benefits of such a flight path. So, who's ready for a sales pitch? Well, I'm not. I'm going to try to deliver it anyways. Uh, usually, in a RP1 playthrough, we're going to launch mostly out of Cape Canaveral. It's the default launch site, which means we usually select it because we're basic and all that. Uh, from which you can, within a couple of kilometers, find three biomes. You can find the forest biome. You can find the shores biome where, on which it is situated, so let's just reuse that arrow for that purpose. And you can also find the water biome further out, which kind of makes sense. It's the easiest biome to find, it's the uh, most on them. Uh, so those three biomes are within our reach if we keep on launching from Cape Canaveral. But if we want to get a fourth biome, well, we have to go pretty pretty far, because the two closest options to us are only uh, are either going to be the tropics down in Mexico or the grasslands up uh, in, I don't know, Minnesota? No, don't quote me on that, I think Minnesota's over there. I, hey, I'm not American, I get to make mistakes like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, one place that I know in which state it is, is of course Brownsville. Well, you, you already saw, saw the launch of, uh, uh, or the takeoff, it's a plane, it's the takeoff of the plane in the last episode. 
so we, we, we already know where, where we start heading. We start heading east because we might as well. This is the first crude launch of the series, which means that any biome we hit is going to have unique data for us in at least the uh, film return capsule and the uh, crew uh, container, uh, the Bonanza cabin. So already we are hitting both the shores for our first biome and then we have the water here which is our second biome and that's uh, I haven't seen m more pretty handwriting since last I wrote anything. Uh, following that we start heading back west and back west we start hitting biomes that we couldn't easily hit from Cape Canaveral which is great it's exactly what we want and uh, unlike flying from Cape Canaveral to hit these singular biomes, there's going to be a lot of new biomes for us from this location. So first location we hit is going to be the grasslands. And uh, as we said last episode, we make sure to stick to a heading of about 250 degrees uh, to be sure not to miss the uh, tropics biome, which is uh, next in line. And... Uh, well, you can see that it extends quite far up, but it's like just at the limit of being uh, at the same at the same latitude as the launch site. So just to be, be sure, we head slightly more south. And uh, the other biomes are, well, uh, the distance to the other biomes are, isn't going to be affected much by ha having this heading rather than this heading. So just to be sure, we head south. Following that, we <laughs> hit the mountains and make sure to avoid the peaks because even though our cruising altitude is going to be like eight kilometers uh, the mountains are going to be higher than that in some cases exactly like they are in real life right no anyways uh, past the mountains we are also going to find some deserts and once we have found those deserts we know that there's nothing left for us on this flight path so we return back and the total flight time of this path is going to be uh, on the order of uh, between, well, depending on your design, it's going to take between 60 and 100 minutes, where our case is near to the upper case because, well, it, it's a pretty plane that we have, but it's not the fastest. Uh, now, that sounds like a lot on paper, and on paper it is but uh, we can easily fly these earlier planes uh, using time warp. So we cut that in four. And the total time expenditure, assuming that you factor out the design and building and all of that, um, is going to be uh, on the order of less than half an hour. Uh, not the entire flight is, the entire flight is not going to be in time warp, to be fair, but in in that half an hour, which doesn't sound as bad, I would say, uh, we are going to hit uh, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, six different biomes of which five are biomes that we at this point in the playthrough haven't gotten any data from. So how much science does that entail? Well, um, using our previous sounding rockets, uh, we have already from the shore gotten all the uh, uh, non-returnable and uh, non-crude data. So that would be the telemetry, the barometer and the thermometer. So um, because of that, we're only going to get in a total of 2.1 science from that biome at this difficulty level. The other biomes how that we hit, however, assuming we remember to run all of our, all of our experiments, is going to net us twice that at 4.2 beautiful science points. So we can uh, tally that up and see where the total gets us. Well, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five biomes. Uh, five times 4.2 is, if I'm not mistaken, 21 science. Add to that the 2.1 science we got from the shores and well, we're sitting nice and neat at 23.1 science gained from this flight coupled with a couple of funds and also a KCT build point because, we, well, for every 20 signs that we collect, we get a free KCT build point. 
As can be expected of a consummate professional, I apparently left copyrighted audio playing in the background while recording this, which OBS picked up, so uh, any voice recording from this session is useless. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it should come as no surprise to anyone that this plane is easy to fly, because I've said so several times. Uh, so unless you missed that, it's an easy to fly plane, including the landing, which... Uh, it's done beautifully using our shitty time control uh, thingamajig. Uh, if you don't want to use time control, it can easily be landed as well, but I realized during landing that I had forgot to quick save for quite some time, so why not just play it safe for the sake of the series? Uh, we get all the signs we wanted to, and we should look where to head next. Well, this has got me slightly worried. I don't know if this is going to be an issue yet. Just seeing basically early Quake graphics in a 2011 video game is not necessarily something that is going to cause issues. I'm just suspecting it will. Well, this is the tech that we unlocked from that mission that we flew. And as I said earlier on, post-war rocket retesting is the most important thing for us. After that comes supersonic plane development, so that once we're done with sound sounding rockets, we can launch manned craft. But that's my cell phone. Uh, but following that, uh, we, uh, we really don't have any direct need for any of these technologies other than having them researched by the time we launch our our orbital rockets. So what I'm saying is the order here doesn't matter all that much. It's just that we, we need to unlock uh, these technologies up to at least basic rocketry. You can do it with basic rocketry, but you need orbital rocketry, preferably for most designs. Uh, you need at least early material science and then depending on if you cheat or not, well, you're going to need satellite air material science to get to orbital rocketry. So uh, research those in order or not, that's up to you. I prefer to always do it in order, but that's going to mean we'll launch an extra manned mission. Uh, and after that, we also need avionics prototypes. Now you can make it easier for yourself if you go all the way up here. But again, that's science that we don't have right now, so we don't really have to concern ourselves with that possibility. So our third sounding rocket is done and ready to be rolled out. And we can notice here that we currently have no vessels under construction. Well, we're going to need the next technology in our research queue to build our downrange rocket. And uh, it's uh, another 12 days before we have that unlocked. So currently we have our VAB sitting idle for 12 days. Uh, yes, so we're in flight view here and uh, our, our facilities don't look all that crazy out here. So that's a relief. Anyways, uh, this rocket, well, the flight path is pretty much the same as with our previous suborbital rocket. So what we'll do here is do the same trick with the time control and the thing uh, where we basically uh, launch the rocket. And once we are clear of the booster, we ditch that and we head on up through the atmosphere. And uh, we'll just do the staging uh, with precision the same way we did last time. I should note this is the first footage that we're capturing after the uh, beginning proper of the series. So I'm testing out a new a couple new settings to, uh, well, make sure that everything is in uh, tip top shape. So we wanna make sure we don't drop any frames. We wanna make sure we don't do anything of the sort. Uh, we're deviating a bit from our 90 degree marker, but I think we have the margins for this rocket uh, squarely in the realm of not having to worry. So we hot stage, three, two, one, ditch that one when we are done and clear. You can see that the spool up proper happens like right at the time when uh, we're clear of the previous stage, meaning we waste as little de delta V as possible by igniting too early. 
So, again, we've seen this flight before, but now, look, we have, we have sunshine. Uh, we've seen this flight before, uh, the flight path is uh, up, it's going to take us down again. We're going to recover this, so that's new, but uh, it's not a very exciting flight. And this is why we try to skip over the sounding rocket contracts, because sounding rockets, they aren't very... Uh, interesting from a gameplay perspective. There's very little for us to do. We just need to get far enough up and uh, get down again. And we can see that without any issues we have broken 140 kilometers on our apps and we have basically no atmosphere to slow us down on our path up there. So, uh, let us stitch that part of the rocket and arm the parachute uh, in, in doing so. And let us just slowly drift away here at a speed of over one kilometer per second upwards. Uh, yes, uh, as far as all the issues we've been having with the install, well, obviously, there <laughs> apparently there's a few new ones as well, and... Uh, well, I haven't really fixed the old one, so we're not going to expect X-Science to be working. In fact, if it was working, we would have science data from flying high for our bio sample here available to us, uh, which we obviously don't. So uh, <laughs> expect improvements in the future. Someone mentioned that uh, X-Science continued is supposed to be working. However, I think that's the version I have installed. So I'll have to go back and review that potential fix. Instead, we're going to just run the sample manually here, getting another 7.5 science. This is amazing. This is exactly what we want. Uh, now to get some actual benefit for our orbital rocket, like the next technology we would target would uh, probably be the uh, new avionics parts that are available after the electro the first electronics uh, uh, blue sky node which uh, is gate kept behind the blue sky node itself and of course its own cost so we are looking at another something like 20 or so science before we can uh, try to make a more efficient orbital rocket, a vanguard rocket or the like, where we wouldn't even have to uh, upgrade the pad. But that's uh, future considerations. That's spoilers. We're not through with the unmanned launches yet. We have to get those done. And getting those done means recovering this capsule, which is currently falling down past the now much less dense booster stage that carried us up here and we're falling down and getting ourselves properly decelerated at about 20 kilometers above the surface. So yes, um, heat tolerance, uh, not really an issue, not on this straight up, straight down kind of path. And once the parachute deploys, we know we're going to make it home safely at least when it properly deploys. We're currently in pre-deployment. There we go. So, following that flight, well, we got 7.5 science from the experiment. We got another 8 science because it was the first recovery we did from a suborbital flight, uh, which should be compounded then with the uh, science we got from recovering our first atmospheric flight in the last, in the last mission we performed. So that, coupled with the funds returned from parts and the payout from the contract, well, now we're suddenly swimming in resources, which is great. Okay, so we have another six days until post-war rocket retesting is done. Uh, remember, we have 26,000 funds that we need to unlock our downrange rocket, uh, which is this milestone. We have all these downrange development contracts those are repeatable with sounding payload contracts, which, well, the payouts aren't that great. Around 10,000 to, to launch those. 
However, finishing this is a total of like 50,000. So even more actually. So that's, that's the one we want to finish. And uh, obviously we're going to be able to do so with an equivalent rocket of launching any amount of payload any distance. So these pay out about a fifth as well as the milestone contract. So we should do the milestone contract instead. Anyways, following that launch, we're going to wait until we have post-war rocketry testing done, which is now. So that's great. Uh, this is not the most optimum rocket that it can be. However, I got tired of tweaking it in my uh, preparation save game. So this is the one we're going to launch. Okay, it's good enough. Um, upper, well, there are differences here from our previous rockets. These are the XASR-1 uh, rockets, which I just want to make sure are unlocked. There we go. And this is the RD, not the RD-100, but the RD-101. So we make sure that is unlocked as well. Uh, it has uh, an initial stage burn time here of 125, which is uh, exactly in line with uh, the rated burn time here. So you could make it burn a bit longer, but the problem is the pad weight. It's going to exceed 20 tons if we do so, unless we roll it out uh, with uh, half full tanks, for instance. But that's, that's cheating in my book, so I don't do that. Uh, all in all, we have unlocked the engines. We're going to unlock the tooling for this, as we mentioned in the previous episode, which is going to cost us, well, 14K here. So we have that. And then we're going to pay to have this constructed. So that's another 770 funds. And of course, that's not all our expenses for this rocket because on top of all that, we are going to be wanting to rush build this as well, because right now we're looking at some ridiculous build time of 218 days. Well, we can bring that down a lot, like so. 128 days to get that out uh, of the VAB, then another couple of days to roll it out. However, before that ever becomes an issue, I want to see here, we can accept the uh, Pass the Carmen Line crewed mission, which will give us a, a hefty advance of 37,000 here. So we want to accept that as well, put that in our bank. Um, and it has a deadline, doesn't it? Of two years, but we shall within two years have committed ourselves to getting a man into space or woman for that matter because uh, this is a historical we kind of want equality uh point being with that we can of course upgrade our vab twice without without issue so that we get the uh, recommended build rate of 0 0.15 build points per second which is going to be sufficient from here up until we get to, uh, to the point when we can start building our, our orbital rocket. Uh, from now on, we will invest in, uh, in tech upgrades so that these times become more and more reasonable. Uh, we are about to do our first downrange contract and it's only August of 51. So, I mean, first and last downrange contract. Uh, past this is going to be suborbital manned flights and orbital launches. Uh, which is what we want to do, be doing, and not this. Okay, so, uh, without much further ado, uh, it's, uh, it's another sounding rocket. This is the last one, so we, we finally live up to the promise of last episode in getting all of this done. How do we get this done? Well, same deal, we're going to be launching it to demonstrate. And this, this is the big plot twist of the series, because, well, we had it... We have it tilted this way, right? But it takes a while before we get up to speed so that we're actually properly statically stable, which means we do our flip in the other direction. 
Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it doesn't look elegant. I, I, I'll, I'll concede to that. Uh, it would be looking way more elegant if we pointed it in one way and it kept going that way. But uh, the uh, the big idea of heading off this other way is well, we have uh, we have this uh, telemetry unit here. We don't have any other science experiments. But this telemetry unit is going to give us biome-specific information for every biome that we cross in low space. And heading out east, we're not going to hit any new biomes. We're just going to hit the water. And, um, and that's not as interesting as heading across the continental US. So actually this uh, flip around is desirable, it turns out. And now uh, tweaking the angle Hello, what the... Can someone explain this? Hello, X-Science. We, we, we know you're here, apparently. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be, because we're hitting more biomes heading the other way, it's more desirable to head, head the other way. And uh, the uh, specific angle that you have to angle on the pad can be kind of hard to find. So uh, don't hold it against yourself if you uh, want to make this a guided rocket by adding a telemetry unit is still going to be p powerful enough to to hit the downrange contract as long as you fly it properly uh, either that or just copy this from uh, from the google drive where we have all the craft files it's time to ignite our second stage and ditch this spent rocket that was not perfect separation but it will do for now uh, and we're now flying high. The second stage has uh, fins that are angled, so we're going, getting some spin stabilization. And uh, there are two schools to this. Some say you should angle your first stage fins, others say you should angle your second stage fins. Some say both. Uh, I prefer the second stage fins uh, because you won't ever get in the regime where your uh, angular velocity is too high for unity to keep up this way. Because right now we're sitting at about 70 degrees per second in spin. And that's, uh, that's plenty to keep us stable, but not enough to introduce any weird physics glitches. Coming up on our second stage burnout. Uh, we're going to slow down time again and wait for our ideal moment, which is about 0 0.8. So we ignite that and to one ditch. And now that we're already spinning already 120 kilometers above the surface, we don't need the fins anymore. So this stage is without them. And we can keep on heading out above the continent of North America. Again, we already got in space near Earth's forest. What we missed was in space near Earth's shores, but we'll be coming up on the west shore of Florida soon. And uh, just a couple of seconds after that, we'll be on burnout of this final stage of the rocket. So, partly in the interest of leaving you all on somewhat of a cliffhanger, and mostly just to keep the episode length down, it's about time we end the episode. Next time we shall follow this flight through to the end of its trajectory and get started on building and launching the final type of rocket we will use in this pre-orbital section of this playthrough. If you have any questions about the contents in this episode, or any suggestions on how to improve the series, please leave them in the comments section below. I'm Gaspachian, and I hope to see you in the next episode.